Okay guys, so we're gonna take a quick sidestep uh, at the beginning of this tutorial. We have to talk about something super, super important that you need to know about when developing programs, and that is called version control or source control. In other words, Git. What is Git? Git is the most commonly used version control system today and is quickly becoming the standard for version control. Yes, it is. Uh, it's what I use, uh, what I've used for years at different companies, and you need to know about it. What, what basically is Git? Here's our program, right? This is what we just wrote, all the source code. This is our master version of our source. It's what we have now. Right. And right now, if you're like me and you haven't done anything extra, you just have this sitting on your desktop or on your on your computer. I mean, um, and anything could happen catastrophically. Your hard drive could die tomorrow. Uh, it could be hit by lightning and die right now. And yeah, your game's gone and it may not be that big a deal right now because you haven't written that much. But as you get farther and farther along and as you get more more stuff, you obviously want to back it up. So you could. Uh, copy the folder, maybe throw it up in the cloud somewhere, that sort of thing. And that would give you a backup and that would be nice. But what version control does is it not only backs stuff up, it backs up your commit. So as you make a change, like today, let's say we add a few things. Let's say we add we add characters today to our source code. Uh, and then we make, we'd make a commit with a comment that says, hey, um, we're gonna commit this code up to, up to a, a repository. Um, somewhere in the cloud and it doesn't have to actually be in the cloud it could still you can still use git just for version control on your desktop i don't know why i keep saying desktop but on your computer and you would have a record of all the different commits so you could say oh this is when i added characters oh this is when i added adventures and you could actually go back to that previous version you could check out an earlier version of stuff you were making also, if you wanted to, let's say we want to try a whole different, let's say we want to try a whole different set of features that we don't, we don't necessarily know if we're going to keep, uh, maybe we want to fix something. We would, uh, we could take this master, master code and we could say, let's, uh, let's make a branch, please. We want to branch this off and we want to call this uh, um, different races. Let's say we're thinking about making different races, but we don't know if we actually want to keep it. So we make a branch off of the master version and now we have a branch called different races and so now we can work on this and make a whole bunch of changes that will never touch this master version and, and let's say we, we change we change we change we like it we're like you know what we like that let's go ahead and merge that back in to our master version then we merge it or we don't like it and we just say ah forget it let's get rid of this branch this branch is dumb and we get rid of it so you definitely want version control going on in your system and I'm going to start on your software. So I'm going to show you how to set that up, how to get st started with GitHub. And um, because here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start branching. This is a perfect example. Starting today, I'm going to start branching this code. Uh, this is this code is a master version of source up to, you know, basically up to episode four. Right, and so every different every different video that we make, I want to have a different branch so that people can come to my version control and they can pull down each uh, episode, and it'll be different. Otherwise, if someone comes along, I can't share my source code of uh, you know, hey, what what what, Todd, what did the source code look like on episode three? If I don't do something like this, I can't say that I can't share that. I'm like, well, I have I have the finished product, you know, twenty episodes down. But this way I can say, yeah, just go look at the branches and take episode three. All right, so step one, go to GitHub and get yourself a GitHub account if you don't have one, it's free. Step two, go to your repositories, go to, go to your profile, go to your repository. I've already set one up, I'm gonna do it again just to show you the process. Um, so my repository name will be uh, test um, learn C sharp test. I like the camel case and misspell. You can make uh, a description for it optionally if you want. I'm going to I'm going to not do that right now. And you can say that you can keep it public. So anyone can. So here's the thing with GitHub. Anyone can come by and see stuff that are in public repositories. They can actually pull down the pull down your source. They can pull down the branch. They can fix bugs and then they can they can push up um, a, a change and so perfect strangers could like maybe come along with the code that you have and say, oh, this is neat code. How about we add this feature and then and then do a pull request that says, hey, will you pull this back into your repository? Now you being the owner of that repository can say, no, I don't want that stuff. 
uh, just for, fork it and start your own repository. Make your own repository and go that way. Private, you would have to pay for. And then we can initialize this repository with, with a readme file. Don't do this because I wanna show you how to do it in here. It'll make more sense to you. So I'm gonna create the repository, boom. Now I'm creating a repository on GitHub. Again, there's a lot of places you can do this with. Uh, Visual Studio has their own, uh, Dev Azure Ops, I think, DevOps. Um, I have some with, with them. Um, and they're free as well, and that's not a bad system, but I love GitHub. GitHub's got a lot of really cool things. So once you create the repository, you get, this will tell you the commands on how to start a repository. So let's jump over. You don't, you can read this if you want, but I'm gonna guide you in this. Go to where you have your code and it looks like this, right? We have our project and we have our new adventures class. You wanna get this address and open up a command line. So I'm gonna copy this address. I'm going to right click on my command prompt and just right click on this and say run as administrator. So I'm gonna CD, meaning change directory, and I'm gonna to go to the directory where I'm at. So now I'm in this directory, and the first thing you're gonna do is say git init, initialize for git. All right, so look at that. We just saw, it just put a hidden git folder in here. So if you open up this folder, it's got all the stuff that git needs to know about to keep track of all the things that it can do. Create a readme, oh, I guess we skipped this first line. This, this actually creates a readme. Uh, .md, which is Markdown. Markdown is like HTML, sort of. It's a way to just do a couple, uh, you, you know, whenever you're writing text, you add this here, a, a tick here, a tick there, and it makes it look a little prettier. Let's, uh, rather than do this, let's uh, go to our folder, right click and say new uh, file, new text document, whatever, readme.md. Yes, I want to change it to an MD markdown. So, I'm sorry, I'm not sure if it's supposed to be capitalized. Let's just make sure it's all caps. All right, now I'm gonna open this and go back here and get this. So this is markdown right here. That right there I think is saying title for markdown. There's a markdown cheat sheet you can find online. I say it like there's only one, there's a, probably a million. Um, yeah, GitHub has one. And if you just do markdown cheat sheet like in DuckDuckGo, this right here is gonna tell you a lot of stuff. So yeah, this right here is saying it's a heading one. So that's a big heading. So as you can tell, it's saying, hey, why don't you make one line in your markdown that says, here's your big heading and says learn C, C sharp test. So we're gonna take that. We're gonna open up our markdown. We're gonna say learn C sharp test. We're gonna say save. All right, what we just did is make a change here. So now that we've made a change, we didn't make a change in code, but we added a file and we made a change to that file. So now we have to commit, we wanna commit these changes and you don't wanna do this every single time you make a change. You know, you sit down for a work session, work, you know, work an hour or two, then make a commit. You know, you, you wanna do it often, but not every time you make a commit. I mean, you don't have to get crazy with it. But we made a commit. So now we're gonna, we need to add these commits. So I'm going to come over here and I'm gonna say git add all. I could have just said git add the one single file, but the way I do it is, you know, in case there's been changes I haven't known about, I do the asterisk mean, which means all. So now it's now actually it's, it's staged it. It's staged it into a little special, you know, a stage that says, okay, now it's ready to make to commit. So we're gonna make our first commit. We're gonna say git. And okay, so also, here's another reason why I did all. Um, I got a ton of stuff in this folder. If, if I did just this, it would just add the readme. I'm gonna, I want to commit everything we've done so far, which is all the source code, right? It's all these files. So I don't wanna just do the readme, I wanna do it all. So git add all. Now we're gonna do our first commit. So I'm gonna say git commit. And dash M is a message, and I'm gonna say this is my initial commit. You can say whatever you want. It says to say first commit. Whatever you want, you're gonna get a timeline of your commits so you can read it, what, it just, as long as it makes sense. So I'm gonna hit enter. And now we've just, we've just committed all these files that we've been working on so far. They're all committed locally now. So now if I was to say git uh, log, I believe it is, there you go, there's a log of everything I've done so far in my Git repository, which is exactly one thing, basically. I've committed once, just now, and it's called initial commit, and this is uh, the commit GUID. Remember we talked about GUIDs, it gives it a special ID for the for the commit, that way it'll help you go back and forth if you use just the, uh, just the um, command prompt. There's a lot of easier ways to uh, use 
get on your local system. You can use, actually Visual Studio will have some built-in stuff too. I can show you that later. Or you can use Source Tree, Source Tree like I have down here. Um, but anyway, now we're committed locally uh, on our machine and it's forever committed into our history. We can go back to it, go forward. But now what I wanna do is I wanna connect this, my local stuff, to GitHub. So here's this, here's how we do it right here. Git remote add origin, blah, blah, blah. This is the location of the repository we just made. If I were to open up a new tab and I were to go here, that's our repository, right? It's Todd Vance's Learn C Sharp Test repository. That's the address. And so what we're saying is uh, give us the remote origin of this. So it connects the two. So I'm gonna come in here and I didn't, I didn't copy it because I don't know how to hit Control C. Control C. I'm gonna add it. And boom, it's just added it. So now I am connected with this. So check this out. Uh, you can see there's no code, there's no README, there's no nothing, there's no, oh, these are all zeros, right? I'm gonna push it and you're gonna see it, you're gonna see it update, which is neat. So I'm gonna say, all right, git push origin master. It's the master branch. Now, if, remember I told you about branching? If we were to make a new branch, I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't be pushing it to master. I'd be pushing it to my new branch. And you'll see that soon when I make episode branches. I'll make a branch and I'll push it to that branch. So, but we're pushing it to our master because all new repositories all have to have a master branch. They start with a master branch. I hit enter and it's gonna connect. It might ask you for the first time for your credentials. Uh, your password that you set up, so be ready to do that. I think I'm already all off in. So there it goes. It, it enumerated through the objects, 50 objects. It did it, it did it, it did it. Now if I was to come over here and hit refresh, you'll see that I just pushed my code. There we go. Booyah. And here's my readme file and with the big information. So if I were to come here, run, one more time real quick, let's get some markdown. Let's say I want to say... Um, I'm gonna get a, let me see, I'm gonna go to materialize. Let's see what a good readme looks like. Woo, that's a good readme. That's got an image, it's got, it's got uh, links, it's got hot links inside. This is a good readme file. So I don't wanna do all that just yet. I just wanted to show you something. How do I get the HRs? Let me do an HR, I'm gonna say, so horizontal rule. I want a heading two and say description and then a horizontal rule. And then this is the series on C sharp. Learn it. I'm gonna hit save. All right, so here's the process. Here's the whole process. Now that you have Git set up, this is the whole process you will use um, when doing a commit. We, you've, you've worked for an hour or so, you've saved everything, now you wanna commit it and go have a drink. So you come here and you say Git, add all, if that's what you want to do, which is probably, it probably is. So we want to stage all of our changes. Right now we have one, we have one readme change. And now I want to say git commit. Another shortcut is if you've been in this, you can just hit the up, up arrow if you don't want to have to rewrite stuff. Git commit uh, with a message of updating. And so write your message, whatever it is you just did. We just updated, updating readme file. Boom, now I just commit it. I can say git log. See all the commits I've done. There's my two commits. You can see this is up on master. This is where my head's at. So my head, the, the current place I'm at, is not on master yet. So we have to push it. Push it. So I'm gonna git, push, the dash U here tells you, tells Git where to pull from next if you wanna pull down stuff. Um, not anything you need to worry about right now. Git push U master, connecting, and we'll be pushing. Now if I go back to my repository, refresh, you look, look at that. I did something wrong. We can worry about that later, but so I got my description, I got my H2, I got my H1. Um, I guess that's an HR, I, I was thinking, okay, so I see what's happening. So after every heading, it, it gives it an automatic HR, and then I put another 
HR in there. Um, I don't know that that's just that might just be the way my browser displays it. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, so that's our README file. We've done a couple things. So look up here. Uh, if we go to commits, you can see we've got two commits so far, and we can read our commit messages. I did my initial commit, and then I updated a README file. It tells you when. So guys, I'm gonna make that it for the day because I want this a clean break between Git and code. I don't want half code, half Git in the same episode. I will pro I will get the next episode out with some real code changes, uh, game changes. We'll add characters and flesh out more of the adventure classes in the next episode. But you learned Git, which is the go-to version of version control nowadays, and uh, it's super important. And thank you for hanging with me. And uh, we'll see you on the flippity flip. Peace.